had quite a week this week. So first of all, um, I turned 34 years old on the 13th of October. Huzzah! Um, one year older, am I one year wiser? That really is the question here. So for people who have followed me for many years, you will have seen that I have been in the media since the age of 18, and my whole life has literally been panned out for the dissection of the public, um, which has given me a really strong sense of mental health, um, simply for having to face such judgment and criticism, but also helped me to grow as a person, as an individual, to stand up for myself and to make my own way in life, um, as I'm also a single parent to my two young children, not so young anymore, 14 and nine. So turning 34 on the 13th of October, which was yesterday, I actually passed an exam on my birthday, which made me so, so happy. It was my NLP exams, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming, and I got a result of 99% in my exam. And this small part of me actually holds on to that 1% and says, you must try harder, you can do better. because. I can do that 1% better. And that's very much the way that I view life. When I do something, I do it with full intent, with full passion and enthusiasm, and try my hardest to achieve what I have set out. Now, something I really wanted to talk about was the importance of motivation. Um, and actually, before I say that, something that has motivated me just this morning was to find out that Facebook measure these um, uh, engagements across weeks, across months, across years. And my Facebook page actually has hit a really good engagement. Let me actually check the number because I forgot what it was now. But my birthday week, my birthday week, um, with the engagement ending on the 13th of October, so the 16th to the 13th has had my highest engagement ever, which is 74.8 million people um, page reach on my page if you can see that I'll, I'll post it on here so you can see that is really inspiring um, knowing that I just share my life that I talk about the things important to me and try my best to to be authentic in how I live something I noticed that I hadn't shown enough was my love for education um, and I actually posted a, a, a question on social media recently where I said what do you think my purpose is to my followers on Instagram um, and they said well you know for people to look at you obviously you want attention and I was like oh, that is part of the purpose in all honesty but actually there's a reason for that what is my reason for that and is it evident to the viewer to the person consuming my content that there is a deeper meaning and purpose to it. Can you tell what that is? Uh, a lot of people said, you want people to look at you so you can earn lots of money. <sighs> I think money is so evil. Um, and actually I have a lot of brands approach me saying, we will pay you whatever you want to feature our product, to share our product, to include a link. And I say, but I don't want your money because it's not my ethos and morals and it goes against how I think and feel and it's not authentic. And they don't grasp this concept of, well, you must want more money, name your price. And I'm like, no, I don't want more money. I don't want any extra than, than what I would normally work for or deserve for my skills and qualifications. Um, I just won't do something for financial gain that is against my ethos. So yeah, it's, it's really bizarre. Uh, people fell quite short from the mark. Some people came close to it, but with the wrong intention. So I thought maybe, you know, I'm not portraying exactly what I'm about. And I understand, you know, that the content that I share can be very one dimensional. They're looking at a photo, they may not read the caption. And those who do read my captions, this essay that I, that I add to my pictures, to my videos, to the deeper meaning from the surface, they seem to understand. Uh, but I feel that the majority of people do just look at pictures in bikinis, in swimwear, in gym wear, see tattoos, see curves, and just think this girl wants money and attention and somebody to take care of her, give her an easy life, not, not have to work. Um, and that's the polar opposite of who I am as a person. So actually my intention is this kind of equation that I built, that I'm having on the screen here, and it is to marry the idea of beauty and brains. 
Uh, I'm not calling myself beautiful before we begin. Um, I don't have an ego. I don't value myself as this wonderful, amazing, desirable, attractive woman. I just see myself as myself. And I mean, if we look at ourselves, are we really attracted to ourselves? Um, I can't say that that I feel attracted to myself. No, I feel attracted to other people. Do I love myself? Yes, of course I do. I, I love who I am. I love how I live. I feel very grateful for my life that I've worked hard to build by myself and for myself. So yes, that brings me peace and happiness. I don't have an ego. I'm not cocky. Um, and I don't think that I'm better than anybody else. I don't compare myself to anybody else. What's the point in that? Everybody has different lives and at different stages in their life. So to marry this idea that people look at my content for how I look, the, the long and short of it is they're attracted to what I love, right? Colors, curves, tattoos, blonde hair perhaps. Whatever their, their interests are, they find me visually. And then whilst they're there, whilst they're looking, because people look, it's window shopping, it's what people do, my purpose and intention is to deliver this knowledge, this understanding, and to make a difference mentally, physically, emotionally to people's lives. So they may be attracted like a moth to the flame by something they find desirable, but actually they leave with a little bit of understanding, whether it's subconscious or conscious, they may have learned something, they may have felt something, they may have thought, Oh, she said something about nutrition today, or she went to the gym seven days in a row. I've seen it on her stories. I might go for a walk. I might go to the gym. And without knowing this drip feed of consistency does make an impact on your life. You might actually think, I feel really motivated and inspired by this person I follow online or watch or interact with. Um, I really want to lose weight. I want to achieve my dreams and find a job that doesn't feel like work, something that I'm passionate and enthusiastic about to make a difference to the world. Or you might just think, well, you know, seeing her do all that makes me feel really lazy. So maybe I won't be as lazy, but not necessarily as active as her. Whatever it is, I hope that what attracts you to come to me, whilst you were here, you learn something and you take that with you. And maybe even pass that on to others to be able to say, I saw something really good online today. It actually stuck with me. Let me try this at home. Do you want to join? And that is what is so important. Spreading love and light and positivity. And the things that you find help you in life, that bring you peace and comfort and love, share that openly. Don't hide it away and keep it for yourself. Don't be greedy, give freely. And actually in feeling this sense of love and peace in your life, you can pass that to others and to make everybody around you feel an inch of how good you feel, to be able to give them that freedom and understanding. They can do with that what they please. So something I really wanted to talk to you about today is motivation. And I know that, you know, with the seasons, with the weather even from day to day, if you have a sunny day, you feel motivated, a rainy dark day, you feel miserable and want to stay at home. I get that motivation changes, but there are two very important forms of motivation that I would like to discuss with you just now. One of them is probably the most common form of motivation, I think, for people in this day and age, and that is away from motivation. So let's think of this as a wasp. If you are sitting having dinner with your friends, out in a garden, you know, having a nice sugary drink, ice cubes in it, eating fruit, talking about life, having a wonderful time, and a wasp comes up to you, your motivation with this wasp is to get away from it. So you will run away. You might flap and flail and jump out of your chair, run to the other side of the garden and hope that you got away from the wasp. You may have done. And then when you've got away, you're like, okay, it's gone. I'm out of that situation. I've been motivated to get out of my seats and run away. And now I'll go and sit back down again because the danger's over, the wasp is gone. And when you sit back down, the wasp flies back towards you. So that kind of motivation is motivating you to leave a bad situation. We can compare that to life and the fact that we might say, I don't like how I weigh. You know, my weight is, is too heavy. I carry excess body weight. I don't like how I look, how I weigh, um, my lifestyle, my relationship, my job. So we want to leave it. We want to change that. We, we understand that we're unhappy. So we want to get away from it. 
and when we actually take steps to get away from it, whether you go to the gym to desperately lose weight or whether you run away from a relationship and say, no, you're a horrible person, I want nothing to do with you. As soon as you are away from what you are escaping, you don't know what to do because you've achieved that motivation of leaving or losing weight or doing something, but then how do you continue from that point when you have ran in the opposite direction of where you were, where do you go next? And that's often where people yo-yo, where they relapse, and where they actually go back to what they know because it's familiar and safe, even if it's negative and, and unhealthy for you. So the other kind of motivation is towards motivation. This is when you set yourself goals in life. So the wasp might you know, be flying at you, and rather than running away from it, you put a wasp trap um, and the wasp smells the sweet treat and goes inside it and you can take the wasp away. That is purposely doing something that brings the desired result to you. Your result there was wanting the wasp not to bother you and having a wasp trap is a toward motivation. Just as setting a goal at the gym to lose weight. How will you lose the weight? When will you go to the gym? How often will you train? and at what speed do you want this progress to happen? You know, you can lose one to two pounds of body fat each week, healthily, in a secure way that is easy to maintain without yo-yoing. So looking at losing a stone in weight, how many weeks would this take you? How will you be consistent? And once you've achieved this goal, what is your next goal? Where do you go from here? And actually having that positivity, that hope, and something to look forward to, to work toward, gives you that motivation to remain dedicated and consistent. So looking at that in work, you might say, you know, I hate my job, I'm going to leave. Well, what would you like to do as a career? What job would you like to go into? And how can you ensure that you reach that? What qualifications and skill sets and resources do you need to be able to have this as a career? And for that purpose, you can then gain qualifications, you can take work experience, you can do your research and take positive steps towards what you want as your motivation, your goal here. So those are two very different ways of looking at motivation. And a lot of people, as I say, are so used to dealing with suffering and pain and unhappiness, their motivation is to run away from the things that hurt them, but then they don't know where to go. So we need to spin this on its head and actually point in the direction. And if we come, of course, we're able to correct back to where we know we want to end up. And it's really important that we have that in life. And I think being 34 now, you know, obviously one year more mature, um, from the content you've seen me post online over the years, I hope that you're able to see that my towards motivation has always been in this direction. That I have been consistently and kindly and compassionately working towards where I am now and how far I have to go still. So I have a motivation in life, of course I do, to make a difference and, and bring love and positivity to the world that needs it so desperately in living my own life that way and inspiring and motivating others hopefully. So um, I continue to study. I've actually got a lot more to study this year and as and when I achieve each goal I will be sharing that with you. But something that I wanted to do this year in particular, this equation of, of beauty and brains and actually showing the two, um, is to show the more geeky side of me, to show the bookworm side of me, my love for education which may not be glamorous, it may not cause people to look, but I don't need people to look at me just to look at me. I would like people to look, to come and learn something, to come and understand me. So, you know, my intention is not to be the most famous person in the world or have a massive house that I will never use and rooms that stay empty and silent. That's not my intention in life. My intention is to love my life, which I already do, is to have a good and healthy life and to be true to myself which I am. And a part of what I will do differently as a 34 year old is to show all aspects of myself. Now I do post videos online where I have fun and I'm being silly. And people say, God, you're really immature. And I think, well, you've never heard my voice. You've never read anything I've ever said or written. Um, you just judge me on being silly with my children. 
And children are such a blessing. We all have an inner child within us and we all deserve to let that inner child out. We all deserve to remember what it's like to have fun, to laugh and smile and, and, and let loose, let go of all your cares and worries and be in the moment. Um, and that's something I really enjoy doing with my children, particularly on TikTok. So that can be misconstrued as this silly mum who should put some clothes on and know better. <laughs> I guess everybody will have their judgement and I personally choose to live how I live and I wouldn't judge somebody on how they live. If they come to me for help, I'll have a hundred ways to help them. If they come to me to judge me, they'll have not one second of my time. So really it's about being able to allow every aspect of yourself to be yourself. To be very responsible, focused, dedicated and um, professional but then also to have fun, to have downtime, to relax, to unwind, to hit the reset button and to be silly. Sing at the top of your lungs, dance until your feet ache, run wild out in nature, hug a tree, cuddle a puppy, do all of these things that make you who you are because we are not 100% of anything. We are lots of tiny, tiny fragments like a puzzle all put together to bring us into the person we are. But what we show to others is often a very small, filtered, censored amount of who we are because of fear of judgment for social norms and what is acceptable. And I don't want to live that way. I want to be myself. And yes, I will show forever different aspects of myself, but something I'm more conscious of now is showing the importance of education and my love for education because it's a very big part of who I am. And if you see a picture of me in a bikini, maybe that doesn't evidently come across that I am an A-star student and love learning. So a pointer to myself is to make education exciting for all. For when you have that teacher at school that really captivates you and makes you eager to turn up for class. You say, oh my goodness, I love learning from this teacher. They make it so fun and so understandable and enjoyable, you know, I want to share how that makes me feel with others. So that is something I will do differently. On my 34th year on this earth, I will encourage people to love education as much as I do. And there's many aspects of education, many different areas of life that you can learn more about, but the learning is what is important. That personal development and self-growth and the things that we can achieve and understand an entire lifetime. You know, to be that wise owl, and um, to have that, that opinion, those beliefs, morals and experiences in life. It rounds you off and helps you to be more considerate and conscious in life. So those are my musings on my birthday week. Um, also something that I shared this week, which I wasn't potentially going to, to say anything about, but now I decided is the right time. Um, my mum has actually had brain surgery, so she came out of hospital on the 12th of October, the day before my birthday, um, and it was touch and go if she would survive. She had to have 36 staples in her head where her, her skull was taken apart, um, and it's a very slow, gentle, delicate recovery for her now. Um, as always, I say please value life, respect life, hold it with the highest most important sentiment that you can ever have. Never take a day for granted. Never feel that tomorrow is owed to you. Be thankful for your blessings. Be grateful every day. And recognize how lucky we all are to be here today with opportunity, with health, and with a new beginning and fresh start. Each 24 hours, every morning that we wake up is a blessing. And we have so much freedom and opportunity in front of us please recognize that and use it to, to its full potential for positivity and love and good health. Um, so thank you all so much for your kind birthday wishes. Thank you for wishing my mum well where I shared that. Um, and thank you for being a part of my journey. Thank you for watching me for however long you've watched from a young, young mum trying to make her way in the world to a confident adult knowing what path I'm on and where I have yet to go. And wherever you joined me on my journey, I hope you can see my consistency and my progress and that my heart and soul are the same, regardless of my age, regardless of what I am, regardless of where I live. 
I will always be me. And you should always be you. You should always be your true self and able to speak freely, openly and honestly to all the people in your life. And if they love you and if they matter and if they deserve you, they will accept you for every single piece of your puzzle as an individual, because that's what makes you so special. So thank you so much for joining today, guys. I hope that these thoughts that I've shared with you stimulate something within and that you can feel safe and confident to share your thoughts with me also. Until next time, take care of yourself, be kind to yourself and others, and I will see you all soon.